Hi there. So this is my uh, DIY alternative to Facebook's uh, Elite Strap upgrade to the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, it is basically fully 3D printable except for some small hardware parts. So if you do have your very own 3D printer, you can print out one for yourself. If not, I'm also making this available on Etsy if you want to buy the 3D parts and try to put it together uh, for yourself. So uh, the story is, um, after hearing on Reddit about how people are getting a bunch of broken Elite straps, uh, I didn't really want to end up spending a few hundred dollars for an accessory that um, I would use for a bit and possibly have it break. So instead, uh, I bought a $1,000 3D printer uh, to prove to myself that I could do something similar and not worry about uh, potentially having the parts break. Wait a minute. So uh, in terms of comfort and usability, um, just to start, it is very, oh, there we go. It is very balanced. Once you have your uh, external battery pack here, um, the system doesn't really push on your face. The comfort level itself, uh, without this foam padding that uh, I made for myself, but if it's just the, just the plastic, uh, it is not as comfortable obviously as an Elite Strap, which has all the padding. But if you drop by, you know, the dollar store or something and buy some foam padding, you can make something for yourself. Um, what I did here was I just got some fabric, um, stitched together something really quick and got some double sided tape so that I have some foam padding. Uh, I've tested this for maybe five or six hours and I found it pretty comfortable, but I guess it really depends on the person. So this video will mostly talk about a uh, bit on the functionality of this and also uh, instructions on how to put it together for those who uh, do decide to print one out for themselves. So let me just start by removing some of the external parts such as the battery and the foam padding. Um, I didn't design any adapters to get any external batteries and stuff like that. I just ended up using the holes here at the back. I don't know if you can see it the holes here at the back and some velcro so I could attach all of my um, comfort items but technically what you see here should be what you get after you put it together so the first thing about it is it uses the head strap from the default oculus quest 2 let me just start taking it apart for you And it's, it fits on the Oculus Quest 2 by some keyhole slots. So I, I designed it like this to make it easily exchangeable in case, uh, God forbid, the side straps do break. And also in case I'd ever do one or I do or if anybody else wants to do some modifications to it, they could easily swap out parts and not worry about playing around with uh, the taking it apart. In terms of how it works, I'm just going to open it up here. Uh, you'll see here some teeth. Uh, this is actually just a simple rack and pinion system where the uh, key here uh, is attached to a pinion gear and that rotational motion is translated into linear motion to tighten the head strap um, when you put it on. In terms of the locking system, uh, you won't be able to see it right now. Um, potentially, you'll be able to see it when I show the instructions on, instructions on how to put it together. But basically, there's just this key here. And as you put it through on the inside, there is a ratcheting system. And as you turn it, I have to put it back in. As you turn it, you'll hear some clicking the clicking prevents it from being loosened while you while you can still tighten it and then you know when you want to loosen it after you can just pull it out a bit like that and then you can easily loosen it from your head just like that so um, the, the locking mechanism just takes advantage of the fact that when you do tighten this head strap onto your head it'll add a lot of friction to the system. So this uh, opening and pulling here 
is um, relatively easy now, but then when you have tension on your head with this, the added friction will prevent this from accidentally loosening. And that's basically it. That's, I mean, there, there really isn't much to it. Um, I guess the rest of the video will be showing you on how to put this together. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So before we start, uh, there is some hardware and tools that you will need to put the uh, whole thing together. You will need a hammer, some pliers, 12 M3 socket cap bolts, 12 M3 nuts, uh, there's only four here, and an Allen key to fasten everything together. First, you'll need to take your OG Quest 2 and remove the head straps from the device. So I'll do that now. We basically need to remove the top strap from the side straps so that we can repurpose it for our 3D printed items later. So what you can do is you can feed one of these uh, things through the hole here and then pull the whole thing through. So what I've done, or what I do, is I like to just turn it sideways. And then feed it through. Turn it sideways. This is a bit finicky. Once you get it in, then it's smooth sailing. There we go. Then you just feed it through. You can toss this away. And you have your head strap. Next, you will need this, this, these two wings, two nuts, four bolts, and your Allen key. So to put it so to put everything together, uh, first you take your mounting base here, take your two wings, and if I remember correctly, you point it away from you and make sure that this part here is facing up like that. Then you put one in, then you take the other one, put it in. And leave it, leave it on the side because I forgot one step. Uh, you actually have to put your two nuts in first, one here and one here, because your strap guides um, or your wings, as I like to call them, will be blocking access to this later. So let me put this in quick. And these nuts are optional because Technically, the holes are small enough that your screws should be able to cut their own threads. But I have these nuts here just in case so that you don't over tighten and, you know, break the threads. Anyway, now that these are in and now that you have this, it has uh, two bolts here, or not two bolts, two pins here that you can use to align with these two holes here. Now that's aligned, you can just flip it around. And in these four holes here, you can put in your bolts. When you're tightening them, be sure not to tighten them all the way because you will need a bit of clearance to actually fit your parts in together later. So 
I like to only have them out by maybe a few millimeters. Do the same for the other side. Too much. There you go. Now you'll need this, the clicky part, four more bolts, and two nuts, and this thing. Start off by putting in your clicky part in this. So you want to line it up so that the teeth are facing the right way. When you turn it, you should hear a click. Then you can just take this lid here and put it through. Once it's through, just put your bolts in. Oops. I put these ones first because they already have the nuts from the previous step in them. That's one. Two. Now you need to put your nut in the hole here. Feed the screw through for the bolt. And basically just repeat for all four of them. So there's only one left. There you go. Next, you'll need the cradle, your spur gear, the two side straps, and four nuts. So to start, you will need to put your nuts 
inside the four holes here inside your cradle. Um, I kind of put some in before and I can't remove them, but you'll, so you'll have to do it yourself. But basically, you take the pointy end of the nut and you put it in like this. So pointy end faces the surface here and it just goes through like that. So put one here, pointy end down, put another one in like that, put one here and one here and they should go in on the inside just like that. If you're having trouble here, you can also use the uh, pliers to help push the nuts in. Once you have the four nuts in, you take your pinion gear, put it here. It should sit inside. There, sh there is a little well for it to just chill in. Then you take your head strap. Make sure that the end with the two uh, raised protrusions are facing down and then you just line it up so that it's all the way to the end of the slot here so if it's not in the end it would look like that you just want to move it all the way like that While you're holding it down, take the other head strap, make sure it's facing down, and do the same thing. Just like that. Now, you take your assembly and make sure that this end here with the um, like cutout part is facing the same way as the part with the cutout here, or the flat face of your cradle. You just need to place it in, and when you put it in, line up the hole here with where the gear is. Uh, it fits together nicely. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is if you do have more bolts, if you put them in on the ends here first before doing all of this, it'll you, it'll help the side wings here uh, guide it appropriately. Uh, in this case, it wasn't necessary. Anyway, and now that you put these all in, you need to tighten your previous four screws here. So uh, I like to tighten the bottom ones, the bottom ones first with the curved end here. And you only need to tighten it a little bit. Uh, don't fully tighten it yet because you have more parts to put in. The top ones I'll leave for now. Because next you will need this thing and your head strap. So first you will need to see where the flat edge is and just check to make sure that you won't be putting your head strap in upside down. So top is here, it goes on like that. So now you take this guy feed them through and you can put them in the top here so my screws are a little too far in so I'll need to loosen them quick just a little bit so that I can put this in between tighten it 
and now you can tighten it all the way. If you have an Allen key, um, I just tighten it using the small edge here until it's relatively snug. You don't want to do it too much because if you add too much stress on it, it will break the part. There, pretty snug. So now you have almost everything you, you need. Next, you'll need the shaft, your handle, and maybe the hammer. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to take the handle and put the shaft on it. Uh, you should be able to squeeze it in, but if it's too tight, uh, you might need to take your hammer and just hit away at it gently until it hits flush with the other side. Do it lightly. Just like that. Next, you'll need to feed this key here through the hole here. Now, one thing to note is that the gear and the um, clicker might not be aligned yet. So you might need to, you won't be able to see it here. Um, I'll, I'll show some, pic some pictures in the description, but you'll need to line up the flat edges. There you go, the flat edges of the key, the clicker, and the gear at the back. So these, the ones at the back, if they're not fully lined up yet, just rotate it a little bit at a time until both are lined up. And when they're both lined up, you feed it all the way through and press. If it's all working correctly, you should hear it clicking when you turn the knob. Sometimes you might not hear it clicking, so you might need just to push it all the way in. Because uh, there's two states for this. If it's pushed all the way in, locked but if it's pulled out by a bit then it's loose continuing you will need your oculus quest headset and your two adapter pieces so to know which one's the left and which one's the right side um, the one on the left has the curved section going this way and the one on the right has it going this way you can also look on the inside there should be a like a weird pattern um, as you can see the contours and it peaks at the tip here that's how you know this one's also the right side where on the other one uh, the peak is on the other side so see how they're different right side left side so these are clip on so all you got to do is take the right one it's a bit snug but I needed to make it snug so it didn't slip so it doesn't slip there we go clip the right one on take the left one Put that one on and yeah it's tight then you gotta find your facial interface feed your top strap through Put the facial interface on. Yeah. 
and then all you gotta do is get the quick disconnects and pull it to lock it in the other side take the protrusion here put it through and pull it you should see a bit of a gap here that's it oh wait i forgot to mention uh you will actually need to tighten the guides here onto the strap so all you got to do is feed feed some bolts through that put the guide through it take a nut and tighten it and do this four times for all four sides okay now that's it 